Hi everyone and welcome back to 5-Minute Family Search. So here we are on step 12. You have already completed steps 1 through 11. I'm hoping that you have a little more confidence now in sitting down to work on your family search. And here we are going to go ahead and finish out the series. So let's read this together. After you've added all your information to Family Tree, see if a green arrow next to a temple icon appears near any names. This green arrow and temple icon do not mean that a name has been cleared for temple work. It simply indicates that this person is missing temple ordinances and that they may qualify for temple work. And before submitting a name to the temple, be sure to double check the information and use reliable sources to document that the information about this person is accurate and that there isn't a duplicate record. Now we talked about duplicate records in another one of these steps, but let's go ahead and go a little bit further into this. So if you are LDS, you can add new information to your family tree and you can see which ancestors need their temple work done. And there's a few ways that you can see which ordinances need to be completed. So let's just jump over to family search and I have pulled somebody up. His name is Thomas J. Lucas from 1797. You want to make sure when you are putting people through to the temple that they have not been born within the last 110 years. Anybody that has been born in the last 110 years, you need to request permission from their closest living relative. Anyone outside of the 110 year mark, you are welcome to work on. So. Here we are at Thomas J. Lucas, and this is what we're talking about. We're looking here at his tree, but do you see this little icon right here? This tells me that temple work needs to be done. So there's a couple ways I can do it. I can click on Thomas J. Lucas, and I'm going to look at this card here. This tells me that his baptism, confirmation, initiatory, endowment, and sealing to spouse have already been done. And if I hover over it, it tells me which temple. So I can see his initiatory was done in Salt Lake in 2012. When they're grayed out like this, they're done. This one needs to be done, but let's click back over here. He doesn't have a mother and father, so we need to look for his parents before he can be sealed. Betsy Simons, if we click on her, this is all completed. So what we're noticing is that it refers to this person here, to De, De, De Villiers, is that how you would say that? De Villiers Lucas. So I'm just going to click on De Villiers Lucas and here you go. He needs his baptism, his confirmation, his initiatory endowment and sealing to parent done. I do not have a spouse for him, so I can't do that work there. So what I will do is I will just go ahead and click on it. When I do that, it shows me what needs to be done. Now. I would have wanted to run a duplicate. It should catch that for you and it should say possible duplicates exist. If they do, you just want to go back through and make sure that you merge those because possibly that record already has had that stuff done. It may have already had the baptism and everything done, but it's not in the record that you're looking at. So you definitely want to make sure that you reserve all those records. In my other videos, I show you how to do this in depth. It's very easy to do. I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to click request. When I do, you'll want to read through this. This is just the church policy telling me what information I need to make sure that it fits in the parameters of, like they're my ancestor and they're not a famous person that I'm just trying to do work for or anything like that. And I'm going to click accept and you can watch that little green temple float up to the top. So we just submitted information for De Villiers Lucas that needs to be taken to the temple. Now another way I can see is I could click on De Villiers. I can click on his name. And when I do that, it's going to bring us to his main page and we can go to the tab that is for ordinance work. And I apologize, it's a little slow today. But if you come down here, you'll see his name and you come down to ordinances and here's our green temple. I'm just going to click on that. And here it tells me the baptism, confirmation, initiatory and endowment were reserved by me, Jackie Maxfield, August 24, 2018. And I needs to have... I'm sorry, he needs to be sealed to his parents. So I'm just going to click request. I'm going to click that reserve all to make sure that I'm getting everything that I can. And I'm going to say request. Now, I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to show you one more way that you can see if a person needs to have temple work done. And we'll do that in the next one. So here we're working in landscape. I am going to change that to descendancy view. And when I do this, it's going to 
change how we're looking at our tree. And in my other videos, I show why this would be important to do. But when I look here, I see De Villiers, and here's a green icon. I can go out generations, and I can change that all up here. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to leave it like it looks right now, so it makes it easy for you to see. So I'm just going to click on this. When I do, again, I say reserve all, I say request, and now we are going to say I'm complying with this church policy we just spoke of, click accept, and now it's going to change to blue. And that tells me that I have put it into my own personal file to do the temple work for De Villiers Lucas. So there are several ways that you can look at your screen and you can see what temple work needs to be done quickly by looking for those green temple icons.